Hey everyone. This is Nick from Solar Punk Surf Club. I'm trying to see if I can change my name, rename. Does anyone know if I'm supposed to start live stream to Zoom events lobby? <laughs> um, go ahead and do that. Yeah, why not? That way people, if people are in the lobby, they can still see what's going on in here. Perfect. Um, I also want to just logistically, I wanted to see if we had breakout control. Looks like we do. Yeah, you should be all set to just ignore me and do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm sure you're busy. Hey, all welcome. Just so you know, this is going to be a uh, very participatory session. Uh, we're not going to be talking to you uh, or at you about solar punk futures. We're going to be playing the game together. So uh, get comfy, uh, get a notebook and some paper. And if you've got a copy of solar punk futures, grab that too. If not, um, I will post a link in the chat about that where you can download uh, a print and play version for free. And anyone can, so share with your friends. Can two people play from one computer? Yeah, I don't see why not. We'll be right back. We're just gonna wait another two minutes or so, uh, give people a chance to end the previous sessions and join us here. Uh, for anybody who just joined, uh, this is a very, we're here, I'm gonna let someone in and then I'll explain in a second. Hey, for anyone who's just joined, this is going to be a very participatory session. So this isn't a this isn't a Zoom uh, Zoom meeting that you get to like uh, watch TV in the background or anything. We're going to be playing a game together. It should be fun. And uh, in terms of things, supplies you might need, uh, I would recommend having a notebook and something to write in, uh, especially since we're playing online. And then. 
uh, you'll need to download a print and play version of the game at the link that I just sent you that I'm seeing some people are having trouble with. So let me just go double check that it's there. So if you just scroll down below the kind of intro photos, there's a featured in section that's getting a little long, we gotta clean up. And then there's it's a big the yellow, a big yellow um, thing, yeah. We're gonna move it up. I think we're gonna, we gotta do some website cleaning. And there's a couple buttons and you'll wanna, you probably wanna at least download the game book or definitely the cards and possibly the game book. Although I'll be reading a lot of the instructions as we play. And the notepad is a great way for first time players to have a little kind of um, Mad Lib style uh, uh, instructions to fill in their story. And depending on how many people uh, end up joining us, we may break out into two groups. Given the number of people here right now, I'm thinking we will probably do that. Okay, I'm seeing, uh, came in a minute, could you say any instructions? Instructions are just, um, if you wanna to go to the website, scroll down to this the kind of yellow banner section, there's a couple of buttons and you'll wanna download the, the print and play cards at least. Um, you're welcome to download the rest of it as well. Uh, the game book and cards are kind of the essential components and then the notepad is nice for first time players. Um, here is the link. I can I can just get a direct link if that makes things easier. Here's the direct link to the cards. Here's the direct link to the game book. And then if you'd like the notepad, you can download that there as well. And just answering any other questions we have. Um, did that work for people? Oh, great, Suzanne, uh, or Susan. Uh, you can uh, play with your physical game if you've got it available. You know, we need to download. All right, thanks, Nikita. Play is the laboratory of the possible. To play fully and imaginatively is to step sideways into another reality between the cracks of ordinary life. Although that ordinary world, so full of cumbersome routines and responsibilities is still visible to us, its images, strangely, are robbed of their powers. Selectively, players take the objects and ideas of routine life and hold them aloft. Like willful children, they unscrew reality and rub it on their bodies or toss it across the room. Things are dismantled and built anew. That was by the sociologist Thomas Henricks from his book, Play Reconsidered in 2006. And thought that'd be a nice epigraph to start this workshop. My name is Max, uh, he or they pronouns. And I'm Nick, also he or they pronouns. And we are two members of Solar Punk Surf Club. Solar Punk Surf Club is an artist collective for surfing the waves of still possible worlds. We elaborate on social ecological aesthetics, AKA 
solar punk in order to demystify, politicize, and historicize our collective utopian future. Today, we'll be conducting a workshop for utopian remembrance that utilizes our artist game, Solar Punk Futures. Solar Punk Futures works in and against the conventions of tabletop role playing to engage players, that's you, in a process of visionary social storytelling around the collective struggle required to win our utopia. The game employs backcasting in a festival of remembrance, whereby assemblies for the future, that's you in groups of one to eight players, will play for about 40 minutes from the perspective of a future utopia in which you collectively remember how your ancestors utilized tools and values to overcome a real world challenge. Through the game, you will engage in the serious yet joyful play of dialogue on the nature of the challenges we face, such as hunger, the water crisis, police violence, the role of individual ancestors, the constraints and opportunities offered by different tools, the forces of opposition the ancestors had to face, the ways different ancestor roles, values, and tools emergently interweave, and more. You will embody positions of historical consequence while engaging with contemporary and ancient concepts from our global legacy of freedom. Assemblies will report back on the form of their utopian scenarios, share any insights gained along the way, and how your experiences might inform your present day actions. Any questions about all of that before we jump into the game? Uh, sorry to hear that, Simone. Um, yeah, can I get a quick, um, maybe uh, in the chat or by jumping on video, just if you're planning on uh, participating in playing the game with us, since this is a game playing session. I'm Here. in. My, my own like mental functioning is not the highest right now, but I'll try. We'll definitely download the notepad then. That'll help you kind of keep along with the prompts and where we're going. Great. I'll play. Okay. Um, I'm seeing yes from everyone, two people from Solar Punk now, and looks like uh, people who aren't have left. <laughs> Great. Well, um, you'll definitely need audio access to play. Um, you can do chat if you're if you're motivated as well. Um, I think audio will be a little bit more seamless, but it's up to you. Uh, video is optional, but encouraged. And um, I think given the number of people we have here, we're going to try to play one big game uh, rather than splitting us up into groups. Uh, so you'll definitely want to take notes about who's who's doing what, at least kind of basic, you know, character names and what they're up to. So with all that said, um, I'm, if anybody has the book, I'm just gonna be reading from starting on page four here, um, same, same page numbers on the PDF, I believe. Um, hey, Solar Punk now, folks. Um, guidelines for reinscription of our struggle for utopia as transcribed from the Free Earth Archive by the delegates to the Assembly for the Future. That's you. Um, living now in our free society, we must honor our ancestors for their struggle. This is not just an ethical imperative, but the only practical method for maintaining our utopia. The struggle for utopia is a continuous process that demands from any so bold as to fight for it a memory of the joys and despairs our ancestors found. The following three techniques are designed to facilitate conversations. They allow future generations to remember, learn, and participate uh, in humanity's legacy of freedom. 
Through these techniques, the free earth archive grows as it is reinscribed. There is a reason technique one is a festival. Freedom is a struggle, but it's also a joy. Struggle and joyful solidarity for utopia. Good luck. Um, oh, sorry to hear that, but you're welcome to you're welcome to watch if you're um, not up for playing today. Um, great. So, a couple things to just note. Uh, you know, we want the game. The main thing is to remember that the dignity of each of the members of the assembly is more important than the outcome of any given scenario. If anybody encounters, this is like a game about real world challenges. So there's gonna be some heavy stuff. If anybody encounters something they are not comfortable with, um, just you can let us know at any time. Um, Zoom chats actually make this, I think, way more socially comfortable than interrupting the conversation. So feel free to use that and we can just modify the story. Um, we're all here to have fun first. Uh, and same thing, if we draw a card that people aren't comfortable with, we can just redraw the card. And then uh, any decisions will just be made, uh, that need to be made will be made by modified consensus. Um, there's a little bit of a little outline in the game book uh, on page eight, if anybody's um, curious about a more formal uh, look at that. And then technique one, the festival of remembrance. So this is the game we're gonna be playing. You have been chosen as members of this year's assembly for the future. Your sacred task is to lead the opening of the Festival of Remembrance, where you collectively remember how each of your ancestors came together to overcome the challenges of the world before. To secure the utopia we've won, assembly members must project their minds backward into one of the many pivotal moments in our legacy of freedom. The goal of this technique is to collectively remember one of the many story, stories that grew into our utopia. There's four phases. The first phase is the ancestors. Second is the challenge. Third is building the new world. And fourth is remembrance. Any questions so far? Okay. So, uh, phase one is it's called the ancestors. Our ancestors are the reason we are here. The festival is designed to honor and reinscribe their struggle. Each assembly member will draw one ancestor and one value card. Introduce your ancestor's name and a detail about how their background connects to their value. Use your imagination to remember each ancestor's name, brief background, and the value that guided them to struggle for a better world. Include some interesting details about the ancestor. Any member can volunteer to begin. So uh, everyone hopefully was able to download the PDF that has the cards on it. Uh, you can choose cards however you want. Uh, random is often fun, but if it's your first time playing, you can also just find cards you have affinity with and, and pick those. Um, the ancestor cards, I think, are all, all the way at the bottom of the PDF. They're the ones with the pictures on them. And the value cards, uh, I believe, are right above them. So what we'll do here is once people pick one ancestor and one value, um, just write that down or mark it or draw the card if you have the cards. And then um, just give, a, you know, give your ancestor a name, brief background, and share the value that guided them to struggle for a better world. And, and as I said, anybody can begin. Sorry to clarify, are we just um, drawing them now and saying what we drew, or should we take some time to brainstorm and bring up more of a backstory? Yeah, I think in terms of backstory, this is very minimal at this point. Um, it, I, uh, I think it can really come off the top of your head, so to speak, as you um, draw the cards, uh, pick a name, and if you're feeling inspired to like, share another unique aspect you can do that um or you can just name the the cards that you drew and the name of the person the name of the ancestor that you're remembering and again feel free to use the notepad there's a section at the top oh one the ancestors and you can see um some kind of prompts that might be helpful to fill some of these bits in
I'm going to give this a whirl. I'm not sure if I'm going to get all the pieces right off, but uh, I'm going to go with ancestor card for now of a researcher whose name is, let's go with Margaret. Uh, this person has worked in a public library <laughs> and was really into uh, helping to build out the, um, the digital commons as it were and, and specifically facilitating um, both residents in the town of this public library system, uh, all kinds of access to, to like material resources, print resources, time and educational resources there on site. And then also part of this researcher's work uh, was like helping to expand the like the interlibrary loan functions and like average people who didn't have academic status to be able to access text from here and there around the world and uh, to help foment a little bit more build out of the the communication network amongst the um, the authors like getting zine writers listed in to the local the this library network that became internationally connected as well. Great. And what um what value did your researcher have? Um uh inquiry was a big one. Nice. And why was in inquiry important to them? Uh coming from this kind of base assumption that um there's just multiple ways of 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 needing to understand things of needing the openness to um, like multiple people's kinds of knowledge and to allow a uh, better exchange of those ways cool that's great that's more comprehensive than i mean it's great it's more comprehensive than you need to so don't be intimidated if you have something shorter than that Well, I think I can go next. Great. All right. So for me, it, was there a value list, by the way? I didn't see values. It's okay. in the card uh, PDF. Yeah, I have to. Uh, what unless is I didn't thing? scroll down enough. Oh. So are they, are the... Is it, oh, does it start with beauty? Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, exactly. it starts with beauty. So there's there's other cards as well. All Correct. Right. We don't oh, have to worry I about those quite yet. <laughs> I didn't scroll down enough, sorry. All right, all right. So it's- All right. I so they it. started somewhere in the middle. Yeah. All right, so- my ancestor, his name is Jonesy, and I guess his value would be community. Um, that's the best one. And the problem that he was tackling was a post-colonial food shortage. So um, the problem is hunger. And I wrote, my ancestor's name was Jonesy, and something remarkable about their background was that he was a community leader. During post-colonial food shortages, he rode around his community on a horse and encouraged them to use their yard and lawn spaces to grow more food. This became a movement across various communities, and now we have little like kitchen gardens growing alongside one of our highways. Cool. That's great. Jonesy, right? Yeah, that's correct.
Um, I've, I've got one ready if we're ready for another one. Yeah. So my ancestor's name is Kat, short for Catherine. Um, she is an imaginateur, so a dreamer, a creator, an eccentric, and her value is joy. And Kat is a DJ who's interested in facilitating um, collective experiences of alternative states of consciousness, you know, whether through psychedelics or through music or just light shows, like facilitating a space where everyone collectively has an experience that's different from what they're used to. Um, and she's also especially interested in working with people who have uh, disabilities or like anxiety or other limitations that prevent them from getting out onto a traditional dance floor so they can still experience joy. She believes that everyone should have the opportunity to experience joy. Great. Not to put you on the spot, but did your friend want to go while you're at the hot mic? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Um, so my an ancestor's name is Anister. He's um, a reveler who values decolonization. So um, he facilitates uh, festivals and celebrations that cross cultural boundaries and um, invites a variety of artists and performers to just come together in sort of an anarchist space and just um, make make art and sound with with little little structure, just um, all coming together. Cool. Uh, Dave or Trey, I believe, are our last folks here. Does that mean I should go, Trey? Oh, please do. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm just done generating this function on Excel, so I don't have to print this. Okay, so I haven't come up with a character name yet, but I have the value. I have the ancestor is six. <clears throat> okay, uh, the uh, so the ancestor is a hacker who values care. So let's give them the name um, hmm, Mimi, because it sounds like not a hacker's name. And then what else am I missing here? Something uh, remarkable the, about their background? Something remarkable about their background. Um, they are older, and they were on, only introduced to computers later in life. And so their knowledge of how they approach hacking is not informed so much by a fundamental inner understanding of code per se, but maybe let's like think more like in terms of like a visual coding language or something like this. Um, and their value of care is important to them um, for, uh, let's say um, a reason why uh, some of the technology of hacking is uh will will like obligately require us to like silo ourselves. All right. Oh dear. All right. So I have to go, right? <laughs> Whenever you're ready. So my ancestor's name is Gracie. And she is an imaginateur. Or is that already taken? You can use it again. Um, and what is remarkable about their background was um, that no one noticed. Did you have and a value? Their value is um, grace. Mm. And it was important to them because um, 
because no one ever saw them, they couldn't see themselves. And um, so they could never really see where they were going and yet they kept ending up in interesting places. Cool. Well, I can't wait to see how it all comes together. So the next phase is called the challenge. Our festival focuses on one challenge of the world before. None of the challenges were easy to overcome. As a group, we're going to draw one challenge card. I think we'll just do it on our end since we have the physical deck here and uh, we'll just draw randomly. Um, unless anybody feels uncomfortable uh, dealing with that specific challenge, everyone will collectively take turns describing the challenge, why it was so daunting and how it ran counter to each ancestor's value. Uh, any member can begin by stating, and this is again, this is in the notepad, before we overcame the challenge of blank, I remember. Any questions? Okay, we'll draw a challenge. All right, I like the look of, or I don't like the look of this one. None of them are good. Uh, we have gender-based violence, harms in physical, sexual, psychological, and economic form repress and punish people along hierarchies of gender. So this is like one of the more personal challenges. So um, I think it's a good one to just double check that everyone feels okay playing with this one. Okay, seeing thumbs up. All right, um, great. Well, as I said before, um, anybody can begin by saying, before our people overcame the challenge of blank, um, uh, well, in this case of gender-based violence, I remember, and then you can name something about why it was so hard to overcome. Uh, and or how it ran counter to your ancestor's value. So I, I've got one just pretty immediately came to mind. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. So, so is that feedback? Yeah. Or does that mean? Um, so uh, before we overcame the challenge of gender-based violence, um, as I said, Kat was a DJ, so she was going to a lot of nightclubs. Um, and these clubs would have problems with, you know, assault and date rape and, like, you know, you have to cover your drink, that's, that's how it is when I go to clubs now. Um, but maybe she had personal experience with it. Um, but, you know, ov overall, all what it created was it made these places feel unsafe. It made her feel like she had to go with like friends, like male friends who could like be a shield and it interfered with her ability to sort of let go and dance and feel that joy. You can't feel joy when you're like, worried about your autonomy and agency and feeling like you might be under threat in the space that you're in. Well, well done. Did you say, I'm sorry if I missed it, do you say how it ran counter to your ancestor's value? Uh, it, her value so is joy, so. Got it. She was not able to feel joy in those spaces. I'll go next. So before people overcame the challenge of gender-based violence, I remember being the wrong gender and trying to be invisible always to be safe. The challenge conflicted with my ancestor's value because she could not reach out and connect to others for fear of being seen. Did your ancestor have a name, Trey? I don't I think I missed it. Gracie. Gracie? 
Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, I'm up in the chat. So, <laughs> yes, uh, my ancestor Margaret. I there's a recollection that um, before coming to more resolution with this challenge, um, there was a just just so much contending to do with uh, people's insecurity about about gender uh, beyond the binary concepts and uh, the fluidity of it and um, and yeah Margaret having a real value around inquiry um, like was one of the people holding up this yeah just the importance of inquiring into that that fear with that vulnerability and into um what i guess could be yeah how it could be liberating for people to uh to just come to acceptance of multiple ways of gender and to not respond with violence to the fear of, of that instability and that fluidity. Oh. Looks like we lost, we lost Dave slash Mimi, our hacker, had to go do some hacking. All right, I guess I'll meet Yep. All right, so for me, I wrote, before people overcame the challenge of gender-based violence, I remember how many battered women, children, and queer folk there were in our communities and how the police wouldn't help. This challenge conflicted with Jonesy's value of community because women and queer folks are part of their community. and shouldn't be victimized because of their gender. Besides, taking care of gardens are hard work, and if people are fighting among themselves, there won't be enough energy to go around, nor food. And then uh, Anister, I think, is our last person who gets to go. So, um... Before we overcame the challenge of gender-based violence, I remember that um, it was especially challenging or, or um, troubling um, for my decolonial reveler because the work of decolonization requires uh, a lot of sensitivity um, that trauma, gender-based trauma, um, nuns, people people have to protect themselves and watch out for themselves so there's not as much room to remain open um, to to new cultures and to um, kind of bring the open-minded flexibility that's needed when you start navigating the um, the conflicts that are just kind of intrinsic to to um, decolonization efforts. Nice. Well done everyone. That was Really good. Um, the third phase of four is called building the new world. Success was not immediate. Utopia required struggle and adaptability. Every ancestor began somewhere. Each assembly member draws two tool cards. So that's the most expansive cards in the, um, in the deck. I believe it's the first starts on the first page, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and you're gonna draw two tool cards and then we're gonna, um, we're gonna set a five minute timer and we're gonna check in after five minutes. So this is a time where we're gonna spend a little bit of time just kind of writing about your, your individual ancestors um, and how they initially approached the challenge using the tools they brought with them or created along the way. Since they won't fully overcome the challenge, 
until the next phase, be sure to think about where they came up short and or which powers opposed them. There's a couple guiding questions in the book on page 14. Um, I'll read them out here. Uh, how did your ancestor first address the challenge using their tools guided by their value? Which aspect of the challenge did your ancestor focus on? Was there a moment when they understood the challenge in a new way? Who were their allies? Which powers opposed their efforts? In what ways did your ancestor succeed? In what ways did they come up short? Any questions? Great. Well, feel free to draw your two tool cards. Um, I think it's important to remind folks, um, if the tool isn't really working for you, you can just focus on your other tool or draw a new one. Uh, there's lots of flexibility in this game. So uh, do what works for you. I often find some of the, you know, uh, really combining the tools in interesting ways can, can uh, yield some interesting results and through constraints, so. Great, all right. Well, we're gonna set a five minute timer and check in on people then. Uh, I think, um, yeah, we'll, we'll check in in five minutes. See where people are at. Five minutes starting now. And feel free to use the notebook again if you like. Um, you give us a, a framework for um, thinking about how we use these tools. Could you read that again? Yeah, uh, happily. So the main thing is to think about um, how your in ancestor initially approached the challenge of gender-based violence and keeping in mind that they won't fully overcome the challenge until the next phase when all the ancestors are going to come together. So be sure to think about where they came up short and or which powers opposed them. And uh, the question, okay.
Uh, looks like people are still writing, but I want to check in. Do people feel like they could use another two minutes, five minutes? You can use fingers if you like. Three minutes. We'll go with five to be safe, maybe. How are people doing? Seeing some people looking Seeing up. Seeing some thumbs up. How are you doing, Akita? Yeah, I'm all right. I think I'm finished. Okay. Um, yeah. So now people um, will share will share back the stories of how our each of our ancestors first approached the challenge, and. Uh, and we'll go on to the next phase. Uh, who would like to go first? I can go. All right. So um, the way Kat first approached the problem of gender-based violence, um, I got I got two that I really struggled with here. So she's a she's a DJ who cares about joy, and I got journalism and flora fauna identification. Um, so for journalism, um, you know, she's, she's pretty media savvy, uh, you know, like you have to kind of promote yourself when you're a DJ. So she, uh, did a lot of like press releases and stuff, um, for this party that she hosted that was like an all women and femme, uh, night at the club. And it drew a lot of media attention. She made it like a regular thing. Um, and other clubs throughout the world uh, started to do the same thing. Um, but it also got some backlash uh, from some people in the trans community who felt that they were excluded by how like uh, it was it was like a women only space and there wasn't really room for like uh, queerness and more fluid identities. Um, and she confronted the gender, the concept of gender binary. And that 
that concept is really limiting and the landscape of gender is a lot more complicated than just um, male and female. Um, for flora and fauna identification, I, I didn't really tie that one back to her approach to uh, solving gender-based violence, but uh, I do have this little story. Uh, she, you know, she likes um, alternate states of consciousness, so she's interested in like psychedelics, and she got to go on a guided tour through the forest where they picked psychedelic mushrooms. Um, and she was researching more about these mushrooms, and she realized that they have this long history of indigenous use, and that they've been criminalized and that there's a whole colonial legacy of how plant medicines have been controlled in the society where she lives. So she realized that uh, the way that she experiences joy also has a, a colonial legacy to be reckoned with. Thanks, Ilan. Um, I, I think guess I can. Okay. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so the tools I chose were guerrilla gardening and cooperatives. So in Jonesy's case, he created like little groups to help with the gardening situation, and like, um. I guess he used like his more masculine presentation to talk to the men and try to like get them to see that women and queer folks are not their enemies. But while doing that, he also realized that um, the reason they were kind of acting out and so on was because of like a fragile masculinity that was cultivated by um, colonialism and like the hardships of um, like working in the cane fields and being dependent on this giant cooperation. Um, when with the women, he, well, well, with the women and queer folks, he was also able to encourage them to form cooperations that would help them become financially independent with an alternative source of income. Um, so they would be able to sell their foods to different markets in order to generate their own income so that they can not necessarily be as dependent on the sugar system and the men in their lives. And the challenge that he found was that um, some men actually started to destroy the gardens in order to like get women to come back to them and be more dependent on them. And um, also he encouraged the men to go and plant food in the sugarcane fields, which takes up more space and thus cuts down on sugar profitability. So that got him in trouble as well with the cooperation. And so, I'm sorry, hold on, where was I? Yeah, so he realized that you have this fragile masculinity from the generations of dehumanization and you have the sugar cooperation who just wants to use everybody in the community for their labor. And yeah, that's what I got. Very good. All right, so um, so in in this attempt to um, reduce gender-based violence in these decolonial or decolonizing festivals, um, Anister uh, decided to um, try to use artificial intelligence to um, find kind of surprising places that um, behavior might be modified in these um, social settings to just prevent the violence from occurring in the first place and hopefully um, allow people to feel comfortable enough to do the actual like emotional and like cognitive or intellectual work needed to you know um, achieve achieve more equality so so there's no um, violent 
pretext. But, um, and, and in order to sort of democratize what the artificial intelligence was, um, was finding needed to be, to be changed, um, uh, Anister thought um, electoral campaigns would be a good way to, so if the AI says, you know, we have to um, change the setting where we, where we have drinks, um, there's an opportunity for other people to have a say in, in whether it gets implemented in just that way. Um, but the problem is that the, the, um, what Anister is concerned with is decolonization. So electoral campaigns um, are ruled by majority opinion. So, um, you know, the, the smaller minority groups, their voices are just lost in all of that. Um, well, meanwhile, Gracie uh, began by um, using the tools of mass protest and community meals. Because Gracie was so afraid to be seen, she felt safer in, in mass protest because she could blend into the larger body of people and it allowed her to remain anonymous and visible in her hoodie. And so she, she crafted a banner and strangers helped her carry it. Marchers formed a camp outside City Hall. Gracie didn't want to camp. The men in suits and camera crews on its periphery frightened her as did the police. She retreated inward, followed paths between tents and her nose to a kitchen area where water boiled and masa shaped tamales. She commandeered a dull knife and chopped veggies, wash dishes. When her brothers found out what Gracie was doing, they tried to stop them by saying it would only lead to trouble and embarrass the family. That meant Gracie had to take the risk of being disinherited and cut off. In these initial efforts, Gracie was successful in becoming less compliant, shy, and isolated. Yet more work was necessary to fully overcome the challenge because the city destroyed the camp and arrested its defenders, hurt people. Nice. Mm. Um, I'll try to share briefly. I'm not sure that we have much time left. Uh, yeah, Margaret um, tried multiple things, uh, one being uh, a free store project associated with this library. Um, so the public library uh, being basically designed as something that's providing resources like or free. Uh, Occasionally, there'll be, you know, fundraising activities, but they're a pretty small component as far as what's being asked of the public. Um, but yeah, to kind of build on that, there was um, deciding to, to kind of augment, um, like, going in the direction of the, the kind of little free libraries that often sprout up around um, city neighborhoods. Uh, there was specifically getting some copies of, of books that are, that were like, let's, let's explore concepts of gender and to, you know, in pretty accessible formats. So like graphic novel and books targeted for different ages. Um, also some, some like, uh, like clothing. So it was important to, along with kind of the larger free store efforts in this city with different kinds of just essential life supplies that people might need, um, clothes being one of them, but putting some effort into making sure there could be a, a range of like different types of gender expressive clothing available. And there's also like 
you know, uh, harm reduction based, uh, like drug re use related supplies as well. So there's kind of a whole mishmash of things. And this is a bit of a, um, you know, a risky endeavor, uh, because there's also like a lack of monitoring of what like how public people would interact with that free store space outside of the the library operational hours. Um, but it did offer some benefit and there is kind of it's considered kind of like an iteration of a strategy to try. And so another thing that Margaret uh, led with following this was work in broadcasting. And so like connecting with people doing, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, like, yeah, community radio and community TV station uh, in this town and also connecting with like internet based radio and TV um websites and to to just kind of be be coming up with different platforms to like foster some more of a public forum to discuss like okay here's some research that's that we as part of a larger community are are currently part of regarding how to reduce the violence that's occurring around people's struggle with gender. And uh, let's try to create like civil opportunities for public discourse around that through these different broadcast media. Thanks. Yeah, so I just want to notice that we are almost at uh, sort of the official time. We were told by the organizers that um, it wouldn't be, since I don't think there's anything following this, it's okay if we go over time for them. But I also understand that people may have other things that they have on their calendars and stuff. Um, but with that said, um, if people are uh, up to stick around for a little bit more, um, we're on to the final phase of Solar Punk Futures uh, of the Festival of Remembrance, which is remembrance. Uh, together, we weave each of our ancestors' narrative threads into the tapestry that built this part of our utopia. This is the culmination of the Festival of Remembrance. Collectively tell the story of how the ancestors were to came together to overcome the challenge. Work together to tell the rest of the story. Everyone participated in overcoming the challenge and many other unnamed ancestors besides. Make sure everyone has a chance to explain the role of their ancestor, discuss which roadblocks were encountered and how the ancestors overcame them. There's a couple of guiding questions. Uh, these are again available on page 16 in the book. Things like how did the ancestors collaborate with one another to overcome the challenge? What was a key decision the ancestors made together how did those responsible for perpetuating the challenge counter the ancestors' efforts? And how did the world look after the ancestors' intervention? Uh, I think a good note here is to build on each other's ideas with consent. Don't be afraid to remind or be reminded that something actually happened a little bit differently, um, i.e. modify or elaborate what someone else said. Uh, any disagreements can be resolved in a friendly manner through mod modified consensus. So this uh, section is the most free form. Um, people, you know, we can kind of just popcorn around and uh, remember the, the rest of the story and how we overcame the challenge of gender-based violence. The game ends uh, whenever someone declares that we've honored our ancestors for their struggle and everyone agrees. The group uses modified consensus to decide if they have overcome the challenge. It's such a big challenge. It's a hard one. They're all difficult. Uh, this is a, this is a, yeah. 
Yeah, I think a good place to start is usually to think about where did one ancestor come up short that another ancestor might have the tools or network or something to help overcome? Well, I think uh, that Gracie was most likely to me Seely's character. Jump, because uh, Margaret. Margaret, because uh, Margaret is working at the library and with the free store. And those are always close to City Hall. Libraries, there's always a library close to City Hall. So it it wouldn't be that we, we would have many opportunities to run into each other and collaborate and, and be, be, become friends and feel, um, you know, then Gracie would feel more empowered and less alone and would be very interested in helping Margaret. Since the camp has been disbanded and Gracie no longer has a project, then Gracie would like be interested in becoming like a, uh, a helper for Margaret and enable Margaret to do more. And since Margaret is getting involved in public broadcast, she would be able to support the DJs and the youth movement and rock the vote together. Maybe we could rock the vote together. I guess I could just jump in real quick. I also imagined Kat would be meeting up with Margaret in some capacity. You know, after Kat realized that having these like women only spaces wasn't going far enough because gender based violence is a big problem for trans people too. Um, she, she wanted to learn more and it sounds like Margaret's uh, community resources would be a really great place to start to opening up that conversation. The, um, sorry, I'm a little slow here, just coming off the top of my head. Uh, There was a good opportunity for uh, organizers working with the public library to connect that to community garden projects as well. And like at the level of supporting workshops for just, for example, female identified or other perhaps minority gender identified like educational activities in gardens uh, and as well like adding kind of a seed saving library aspect uh, that so yeah, like a physical uh, library for different heritage seeds, but as well like a storytelling collection library um, using the broadcast media connections to uh, to propose kind of an interview series uh, with with different community members and. Um, some of those media pieces to you know allowed for like people to be profiled anonymously as well who didn't want to have their identities you know they could be like a bit masked but to still have their statements included in these kind of these mini documentaries that that were available as part of this community archive space and that could even lead to poetry slams and songwriting tying back into the multicultural festivals. Um, a lot of the indigenous cultures have long been into seed preservation and um, 
So there would be a lot of tie-in there as well with bringing those cultural influences. And then, you know, obviously we've, we've suddenly, you know, we've grown our concern from being simply focused on violence against um, gender-based gender violence. violence into um, into a community, a self-sustaining community that um, can shun that behavior and can set boundaries around that and can self-sustain and um, form functioning paradigms as examples. What was the phrase you used, Seely? Oh, you used big words. I was so impressed. Now I can't remember what they were. <laughs> it's gone. It came and went. I want to invite Nikita. I think I wonder if like some of the masculinity detox and co-op stuff where you're you're dealing with the way that like the labor structure kind of leads to some of this. I wonder if that could use some amplification. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. And um, like I was just thinking about Anister's work and how they're decolonizing with uh, multicultural festivals. We actually have a festival here called Mashramani. So, and the ancestor that I was writing on was actually loosely based on the person who actually started that festival. So um, I was thinking about how you could have something like a food festival that's all savory foods to reject the like sugar cooperation, like you don't give them any money. Mm. So you have all savory food. Um, and Jonesy isn't really technologically savvy. So Anister's like whole idea of like creating AI, I believe you had said that an AI to like identify like restaurants that she can go to so that she can like see who is doing the work and who isn't. I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. But um, yeah, that can work into it if they were ever to meet. And like you can have like a space for people to just like be happy and free without judgment. Like if it's kind of like the way carnival has people that kind of challenge gender like you have like especially like here we have some masquerades that have like men dressing up as women women dressing up as men and it's this whole gender swap kind of thing and then using that as uh like an avenue to say hey y'all is so different after all maybe we can you know make up do better yeah, that's that's my my thing. Here. Love, love the power of the festival to overturn social relations. Very David Graeber. So we can all share our seeds and our stories and our songs and rock the vote. <laughs> because so that the minority's voice, you know, get so that the minority opinion isn't lost. Yeah, maybe, maybe this, um, like, co-op um, might be a good site to um, host representatives of a lot of different indigenous communities. So when things come to a vote, and it seems like, you know, maybe some group feels like they were left out. They can discuss things and maybe take it to this broadcast so it can be distributed. So, so whoever makes up this majority voting block can understand why whatever they thought might be a solution isn't such a great solution for all.
And eventually City Hall will go off planet, right? They'll have it all used up and we'll be down here recycling and replanting. Maybe City becomes the co-op. That reminds me of Jemison's emergency skin, to be honest. If you've ever read it. That was just recommended to me in a panel this morning. It's like first on my reading list now. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Right emergency skin. Yeah, I think there's a transition at some point involved here, along with shifting the gender norms to uh, the kind of going past the the structure of, of voting for city hall representatives per se and coming up with direct representation in a little bit different model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those co-ops seem like a good seed for that. Yeah, it seems like the um, the the multicultural festivals that are that are coming together, being hosted all over the world, being DJed by Cat, um, <laughs> is a great space to try out um, those those new forms of governing and decision making. Because you know, it takes a lot of work to run a festival. You need to have like a coalition of people behind it who are planning it and executing it um and that that structure could be prefigurative it could be you're practicing the the structures that you want to see uh grow and change the world i'm trying to think about how to tie it back to gender-based violence now i feel like we're just changing the whole world instead <laughs> happens every time it tends to happen with this game <laughs> but i think that um to tie it back, a lot of the, like, it takes, as you said, a lot of organization to, um, a lot of work to organize festivals. But there's also a lot of money involved that will be generated from the people who are attending, sponsors, etc., etc. Part of the proceeds can go back to helping little, like, grassroots organizations that are combating gender-based violence, which is something that I've been seeing here locally. Well, and if, if you had to pay to get in with seeds, seeds would, would have more value. Yeah, but like I would come with like five avocado seeds and there's this guy with pumpkin seeds. Who <laughs> seed is more <laughs> valuable here? The, uh, you know, the the heirloom tomato seeds clearly would uh, have more value over the uh, non-heirlooms. <laughs> you know, they have yeah. the jalapeno wars in New Mexico where where families guard the uh, their jalapeno strains. I think that sounds like a good heist um, idea. Just Literally. people raiding people's jalapeno gardens. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that as like a comedy short film or something. Well, Liberate and then the you have the corporations coming in with the GMOs mucking it all up. So I might make the, it even more valuable. The the challenge, I think the challenge for us is um is coexisting during the paradigm shift with the dinosaurs and the, you know, the corporations. Since, since we're turning maybe to a little bit of meta conversation, do people feel like we've honored our ancestors for their struggle? Or are there untied threads that people wanna make sure they put a cap on? Next metaphor. Cap those threads. Cap the threads. Yeah, I think all threads are capped here. Um, I want to put a bottle in it, so. <laughs> I think the only unresolved things thing is that while you can overcome gender-based violence within your own community that you've formed, 
there's still the pre-existing world that you, you know, whose violence you're trying to escape, who are still out there perpetuating it and perfectly happy living that way. And even some of the people again, you know, I mean, that it, our emergence doesn't necessarily make it go away. Yeah, I think that's, that's the, you know, unless they just lose interest in this planet and go off of it, we're stuck with them. Yeah, I think that's a great transition. If people feel like we've honored our ancestors for their struggle, then um, there's a kind of optional like um, postscript uh, in the book, uh, which is the, the assembly's report back to the Free Earth Archive, where we discuss some questions, one of which is, I think to your point, Trey, is that many of these challenges may reemerge. So one of the questions is what is being done today in the utopia to mitigate the possibility of the challenge arising again? I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Um, but there's other questions that people may feel um, you know, interested in sharing their thoughts. Did the ancestors fully overcome the challenge? Uh, what work is left to be done? What lessons should we learn from the Festival of Remembrance? Was there a key moment or idea in the festival that inspired you? Which people have faced this challenge that should be honored for their struggle? And you are a future ancestor. How do you want to be remembered? I don't know if anybody- Good knows. questions. <laughs> I don't know if anybody feels oh. like to go. Yeah, go ahead. Mar Margaret, you lit the torch. <laughs> you lit the torch and we have, and you've passed it to us. So let's circle back to you. <laughs> you've been nominated. I mean, Do you accept? Well, the thing about libraries is that they're long standing institutions, not managed by just any one person. They're they really are collectively held and operated uh and there are many ways to kind of um execute like versions of libraries right different types of libraries so uh i just want to i just want to like note that in there that it's like margaret is just part of participating in versions of this thing that that exist at many levels and are beyond one person but um, but we honor you margaret <laughs> margaret appreciates this well uh i need a little like a quick remind like the prompt is basically to think about how do we deal with the potential like perseverance of this you know try to guard against this struggle re-emerging on this particular issue of gender-based violence? Yeah, exactly. That's the specific question that I think Trey brought up. Um, and it was just, since we were already kind of transitioning into that, I thought I'd open that up for discussion if people are interested. But there's other questions are equally interesting, I think, if uh, another one struck you as appealing, or anyone. I've been thinking about the problem of like, uh, the, the question of how the problem would reemerge. I mean, I think it definitely would. Gender is, is very persistent. Um, and I'm imagining that, well, so so this you know, music festival thing, this, this new culture of how these festivals function, how they're how they're structured, how they're organized, that's that's going to persist. There's this is like the new way of of celebrating. It's it's across cultures. It's democratically organized. Um, it's organized like structurally organized against gender based violence. So there's like there there are a lot of barriers to gender based violence cropping up in that environment, and it. it it's the cool thing to do. So it's, it's sort of a cultural shift within festival culture, I guess, um, where it's 
cool to go to a festival that's accepting of everyone that's opposed to gender-based violence and it's it's a conducive space for openness and acceptance and it's not a conducive space for violence and fear and i i, mean, I don't know where i'm going with it i guess it, just, it becomes very uncool to try to enact gender-based violence or try to act in a sexist or transphobic way and right now currently our our, our festival club culture, whatever you want to call it, is not there. So I'm seeing that cultural shift being really important and permanent. Did anybody, was anybody else struck by any of the questions as uh, interesting or something they thought about uh, or wanted to share? Those were, did the ancestors fully overcome the challenge? What work is left to be done? What is being done today in the utopia to mitigate the possibility of the challenge arising again? What lessons should we learn from the Festival of Remembrance? Was there a key moment or idea in the festival that inspired you? Which people have faced this challenge that should be honored for their struggle? And you are a future ancestor. How do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered with a torch in my hand and my head on fire. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if this is directly addressing any of the, those named questions, but I, I, I feel like one of the big takeaways for me is just the um, uh, like the cumulative, um, I guess, permission giving and expansion, the way that that can keep building nicely when a group of people uh, are invited to think together creatively and how like the inspiration to be building on each other's ideas like we got to that a point of flow with that pretty quickly um so i really appreciate like having that kind of um that capacity to be highlighted through this process um yeah i mean having separate thoughts as well about uh like something coming to me is about like reaching a point where the the just the economic costs as part of the social costs of of um of just how completely crappy for everyone's health the amount of of like patriarchal heinousness <laughs> became um j yeah just like the amount of uh just like physical health problems kind of systemically through cultures that 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 level reached a really unsustainable level where even like dudes in positions of power in government were just being uh so felled by their own like the toxicness <laughs> um that 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 contributed kind of like a turning factor to to societal willingness to like open into this vulnerability and to to change the the status quo um okay so the question that stood out to me was like, what work is left to be done? And um, I think like starting early with integrating um, these messages into like the way we teach and raise children is important. And thinking back to like um, festivals and festival culture, here we have two different festivals on a technicality you have the actual mashramani that's for everyone 
that happens on the 23rd of February. But the Saturday before, you have Children's Mash, which is a separate festival that's just entirely for children. Children singing Calypso, singing Soka, singing, like making their own costumes, going down the road, and they have fun. So you can also integrate those very same values and have like, I don't know, children DJing their own music that they created in order to like prepare them for the bigger festivals to come. So that's that's not just um, with music, but for everything else that we discussed here, that you kind of have to give children the tools well, the adults cost start themselves out first, but then once they do, or during the process of them starting their stuff out, you can integrate that into the way you teach children and the way children learn. So, yeah, I think we've all honored our ancestors. Yeah, with, with that, I know we're 30 minutes over now, so I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, really appreciate everyone joining us. I'll also, let me just finish us out because I skipped the, the final lines here. Um, when the assembly had, has agreed that we've honored our ancestors, a symbol of the challenge is tossed into the fire, the metaphorical fire in this case. Uh, the assembly has recovered the continuum between our ancestors' struggle and our present utopia. By resurrecting our ancestral memories, we have participated in humanity's legacy of freedom. Um, Yeah, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Please um, feel free to download the print and play, um, play with friends, uh, let us know how it goes. And um, yeah, thank you for joining. Are there any final questions before we part ways? Or comments, Trey? I was just going to say thank you. It was really fun. And now I've got it printed out. Perfect. So I'm going to share it with my grandson who likes to play Dungeons and Dragons. Nice. Yeah, I'm really appreciative of the chance to, I had no idea what was going to happen in this session. Uh, But yeah, it was really great to have the intro. This is a, a really nice game project. Yeah, some really good storytellers came today. That was wonderful. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, really interesting to try to put together some really apparently disparate ideas and problems. Um, it was really, really enjoyable. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. This, this was my first like tabletop-ish session, so... Thank you for that introduction. This was great. And yeah, I think I might actually work on this story later, but we'll see. <laughs> Very oh, cool. great. Share it with us if you do, please. Uh, do. I think we have a contact form on our website or our email is just solarpunksurfclub at gmail.com. Gotcha. And if you want to hear more about some of the backstory and ideas behind this project, check out our interview on solar punk now podcast oh geez thanks <laughs> it was <laughs> i talked so much about this game and i got to finally play it and it was great thank you so much <laughs> super glad you were here glad to be here <laughs>